Welcome, my name is Tim, and in this short video, I'm going to show you how to locate a faulty transformer on a gas furnace. Now to begin with, we're going to click the system selector switch on the thermostat to turn it to heat mode. This will also increase the set point temperature above the room temperature. Be sure to observe the procedure guide at the top of the page after each step. So we're going to click OK here. Next, we're going to remove the cover from the furnace. And when we do this, there's a little door switch down here at the right center of the furnace. When the door is removed, this switch is going to open its contacts and break power to the furnace. So we're going to need to make sure we have power to the furnace, and we can do this by simply taping that door switch in once the door is removed. Click on this little orange rectangle, and that'll place a piece of tape over the door switch. And that just ensures that 120 volts is being received at the furnace. Click OK, and our next step is to observe the inducer. Is it running? Well, the inducer is the first component that would start when the thermostat called for heat. And based on the stationary position of those blue arrows, the inducer is not running. And you also have speakers where you can verify sound there as well. So no, our inducer is not running. Our next step is to check the main power coming to the IFC. You know, we could have a bad door switch even though we taped it in. So place your meter leads at the line voltage and neutral connections, and they're gonna be here where this orange spot is right here. So that's the line voltage connection. The neutral connection will be placed anywhere on the neutral block, and we're gonna put it right at that orange glowing hot spot. And we do in fact have 120 volts being received at the integrated furnace control, or IFC. So we're gonna click yes on the procedure guide. Now our next step is to measure for 24 volts at the low voltage terminal strip. Now we're going to look at terminals R and C, and in fact what happens here is the transformer passes 24 volts into the IFC and they come, kind of come back out at the R and C terminals. So we're going to place these leads at the R and C connections on the low voltage terminal strip here, and we're going to look for 24 volts at, those, at that location. Now when we do that, we can see we have zero volts. This means there's no 24 volts at the IFC, and obviously this is a problem. Nothing's going to operate in the furnace. We do, in fact, have 24 volt circuitry within the furnace. So our answer here is no, we don't measure 24 volts. Our next step is to look for any obvious loose connections. And you can zoom in or rotate if you need to, to verify this. And it appears that all connections are secure. So no, we don't have any loose connections. Our next step is to go to the transformer. And here's the transformer here. And again, you can rotate or zoom in to see it better. Let's take a look and make sure all the wires are secured. The primary side of the transformer is this black and white wires right here. And this is the 24 volt or secondary side with the red and blue wire connected. And it appears that all wires are securely fastened to the transformer. So no, we don't have any loose connections there, okay? Now we want to take one other look here back at the IFC and determine if the red and blue wires are possibly loose at the IFC. And again, don't hesitate to rotate or move things around or zoom in to get a better look. And no, we don't have any loose connections here either. So now our next step is to check out the transformer. And this is most likely our culprit. We're going to measure for 24 volts at the secondary side of the transformer, which is the red and blue wire. So just drop your meter leads on those glowing orange hot spots, and you'll be able to verify if you have 24 volts there. And as we can see on the meter display, we do not have 24 volts. We have zero volts. So yes, we've measured zero volts at the transformer secondary. Now we need to look at the primary side of the transformer. Just because we have zero volts coming out doesn't mean that the transformer is bad. It's possible that we don't have 120 volts going into the transformer. So we've checked the output already, and now we're going to check the input. We're going to take our meter leads and place them on the primary side of the transformer, and we're going to measure for 120 volts. And when we do that, we do in fact have 120 volts. So this verifies that we have power to the transformer on the primary side, but we don't have any secondary 24 volts. This indicates the transformer is faulty. Now, I always suggest doing a resistance check of each side of the transformer. Sometimes if the secondary is open, that could be due to an overload condition, and simply replacing the transformer um, may result in the new transformer burning right out if there's a short or something to that nature in the circuit. 
However, most of the IFCs have fuses, so if this were to occur, the fuse would blow prior to the transformer failing. So at this point, we're going to just pretty much assume that we've got 120 volts at the transformer primary, nothing on the secondary, which means we're going to need to replace this transformer. So simply click on it, replace it, and at this point, don't forget to remove that tape from the door switch and replace all caps and covers. The last thing you're going to want to do is go up to the residence or the building and verify that there is, in fact, heat being delivered to the building through this floor register. And we can see here that we have hot air blowing out of the register. So we've solved the problem. Good luck on all your future service calls, and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. You can try our on-demand VR-enabled learning for HVAC by signing up for a free trial. Go to interplaylearning.com to get started.